Okay, so I think colleagues will continue. And we will start with the maritime and transport law for the Palladium. And it was for the discussion which is dedicated to, to contemporary and legal issues in the shipping industry. We have four really excellent speakers, and uh, it's my pleasure to announce first speaker today. And that is Professor Susanna, the Blue Southern Cosa. Professor, thank you, Dr. Susanna, as she said, is an assistant, assistant professor sorry, at the Commercial and Maritime Law Department of the Law and Administration Faculty at the Nicolaus Copernicus University in Turin. And she's also vice president of the Polish Maritime Law Association and a member of Maritime Law. Uh, commission, uh, Commission's Board of Polish Academy of Sciences, and she has concluded her research in um, so many maritime law centers, such as Oslo, Southampton, Castellon in Atlanta, as well as New Orleans. And her presentation is dedicated to a really interesting topic, so we will continue with the thumbs, that's all I can say. And the title of her presentation is Law Applicable to Liability for Damage Due to Actor X Involving Autonomous Vessel Private International Law Issues. So, Susanna, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. So, let me start by saying, let me start by saying that this is a uh, more dear friend, uh, 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 but I'm going to talk about something special. No, I'm a little disappointed that I'm a little disappointed that I'm going to have to lose you because I'm not going to talk about some time you know, lose. Uh, with the remote operator, with the status of the remote operator, etc. But I'm going to talk about the conflict of law rules, which would be applicable if, in case of that, those uniform instruments that I'm now discussing whether they will apply to the ships or not, uh, if those conventions will not be applicable to a particular maritime So this is and uh, this is my research, and I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit nervous because this is the first time that I take up a piece of law uh, rules as a subject of my presentation. And uh, this is because, uh, to my surprise, uh, last year I was told that I had a classes on conflict of law, which I never did before. <laughs> so we use, as lawyers, we use conflict of law models uh, from time to time when we need them. But I was saying with the duty to prepare a whole lecture with students, and so with the challenge for me, and I thought that really use that experience uh, to talk or to bring uh, some other perspective into the subject of uh, autonomous shipping. And uh, my research will try to answer uh, a question of whether those conflict of law rules. That we have in the European Union, that would be my uh, standpoint, uh, serve uh, the needs uh, that we have, and we need other adequate to deal with autonomous ships. That would be whether they are clear enough and they protect those interests that we want to be protected in terms of the law applicable to a court and a committed for the use of autonomous vessels. <clears throat> the allocation of liability for um, instruments including the current level may lead to liability to the part. So you may have stronger ships operators uh, in certain jurisdictions. We may have the liability of the remote operator, of the remote operating center, of the mass manufacturer, or uh, the uh, software programmer producer, and depending on who we want to sue, different conflict of law rules will apply. So, this is something that we have to take into account. I'm trying to give also the basics, can in mind that we have uh, our main emphasis students. So, uh, let me try to do it in such a way. And why the conflict of law norms are still pertinent? In my opinion, they are because the substantive law. If international convention or supranational uh, legal instrument like, for example, for the liability doesn't apply, the national laws and courts are very different. We have a limitation of liability, limitation of liability, 
Uh, we have to give material information, drug information, how to calculate damages, etc. All those issues will have a question mark uh, and will differ depending on the law applicable to a uh, particular case. And in the uh, in European Union, those things that deal with that, which we will hopefully uh, have a look into today, is obviously the wrong regulation. Uh, but as well, uh, 1974 Hague Civil Service Convention, which is applicable in some uh, EU member states, Croatia, to my surprise, and Spain, as well, is a part of the Hague Civil Service Convention. So let me go on there. And those uh, slides show which, um, in my opinion, this rule of the law to regulation should be taken into consideration when. Talking about the law applicable to incidents involving autonomous vessels, we should start by saying that there is no separate conflict of law rules determining uh, the uh, damages caused by artificial intelligence of the people. You will have to use those basic ones. And we are Article 4, which introduces basic rule of the law regulation. Article 14, which allows the parties to conclude an agreement, should the law applicable. Uh, Article 5 in product regulation, which is for product regulation claims, and I would definitely want to talk about that. And Article 17, which requires the court to take into account when determining the liability of the party, uh, rules uh, of uh, safety rules and rules of the place of harmful effects. So, this is the framework from the Roman Convention that we should uh, have a look to end. Well, this we uh, started all quite late. Uh, I'm going to just uh, rush through those moments, which, in my opinion, don't pose a substantive problem, a serious problem. Uh, this is the applicability of court report on the basis of the uh, broad regulation. So, generally, the law applicable to accidents involving autonomous ships will be governed by Article 4 and it adopts a basic rule of flexible to damage. The law, the law applicable is the law of direct damage uh, with two variations Article mm -hmm. 4 2, common habitual residence of the suffering party and the party claim damage by the claim liable, as well as the escape clause or escape rule of Article 4 3, uh, which talks about manifestly close reconnection. Uh, and if I need more time, I will uh, talk in detail about Article 1, but let me just simply say that by choosing a wrong to regulation, the law of the place of the damage. Uh, the European uh, Union developed from our solution, which used to be adopted in several member states, uh, in as much as those national laws allowed the second party to choose among either the place of damage or the place of harmful impact. And that is not the case uh, anymore on the law from regulation. Uh, from two regulations, the law of, the law of direct damage. Um, it is direct damage, and therefore, uh, the CJ uh, EU explained in the case of Florin uh, Lazar versus Allianz that uh, the material and non material um, damage of the car accident mm -hmm. is relatives are indirect damages and therefore should not influence uh, the uh, choice of law. Uh, however, in cases of um, vehicle accidents, we have to say that the uh, place of direct damage will usually be the coincide with the place of harmful effects. So that is the base of the rule. And then uh, the escape law of manifest closer connection was intended to give the court some more flexibility in terms of which law to apply. But this flexibility, I have to say, is quite limited because of the wording. This, this is the word manifestly uh, uh, closer connected. And uh, the wrong to regulation gives one explanation of it that something if there exists, a strong pre the pre tort relation between the parties, the parties that bring damage to the claim level, the court may divert from for one or for two uh, to uh, this uh, manifestly closely connected law, the law which is 
uh, close to the treatment market regulation uh, between the pre existing so the, the relationship between the parties between the parties. There's a contractual relationship that we've decided in the long term. Then Article 17, which uh, talks, uh, which requires the court to take into account rules of safety of some and subjects uh, all the place of the damage. And that more is generally literature criticized for allowing the uh, party claim liable to rely on lesser or lenient rules of the place for the harmful effect of the place uh, in case. Uh, uh, the uh, rules otherwise applicable will be stricter. But in cases of autonomous ships, once we unify the safety standards, this the norm of Article 17 should not have uh, such a big influence on the definition of the article. At least in my opinion. And last but not least, when talking about the space of rules, uh, they about the choice of law and uh, uh, those of you who uh, are thinking about students who have come to the law classes know that there is this trend in international private law to extend the um, freedom of the parties to choose the law of the law beyond almost contractual relationship. And this is the, uh, the example of the law to regulation such choice of law is allowed. However, it is uh, designed to protect the weaker parties because generally this first report is allowed only after the harmful event causing the damage happens. Uh, prior, uh, I call them uh, ex ante choice of law, that is allowed only if both parties conduct commercial activity. So that may be something which provides greater predictability in cases of operation of accidents involving autonomous vessels. If you can uh, see a pollution of, for example, um, ship owner or ship operator concluding such a uh, choice of law or clause uh, uh, with the peer only, for instance. Uh, determining the law applicable. So there is this potential of providing greater <laughs> Now we go to the area which I think brings more uncertainty and uh, raises more questions, and we put the uh, law applicable to the product liability claims and accidents. Why do we talk about it? Because as we have said at some conferences, Accidents involving uh, ships operated by artificial intelligence may lead to product liability claims to the software producer or manufacturer. And the current of law rules, uh, rather than claims, product liability claims, is still pertinent. Why is that? Even though we have product liability directed in the past. Uh, it doesn't provide a full organization of the European law, an effect of a partial organization. It contains a lot of options for the states uh, to adopt their own system. One of the examples is the exception or not of the so called development list. Uh, but the product today they can answer many other questions, uh, like, for instance, uh, damage assessments. Um, uh, recovery of non material damage, the right of contribution, uh, recourse action, uh, prevention or instruction of the limitation of the risk. So these are the areas which are not uh, uniform and they're currently global to decide the opinion and still play a big role. So the problem of this uh, not applicable to um, product liability claims is twofold. The first one is that there is this dichotomy of measurements. So we have the um, regulation, but also we have 1973 Hague Convention talking about in this case. And this is, in my opinion, uh, a big problem, which I will uh, hopefully achieve to come the home. And then the second fault of the two uh, problem is that those norms in general, uh, both in Rome to regulation and in Hague Convention, are quite complex. Uh, and uh, complicated. So the first problem of uh, dichotomy derives from the fact that Article 28 of um, the Rome regulation provides priority of 
or earlier about this international convention mm -hmm. with the exclusion, however, of those international conventions that were agreed solely by the member states. And uh, 1973 has not turned to be successful because of the eleven contracting states, so today. Uh, Croatia and Italy, uh, other European countries like Finland, France, Netherlands, Slovenia as well, but it does include also non member states. That is why, according to Article 28, in those states which are member states of the Hague Convention, courts will determine the law article, will set aside strong regulation. Uh, now, totally, because the 1973 convention contains some gaps, and in those gaps, they will have to go back to the old convention. But generally speaking, they will have to use the technical values deriving from the 1973 convention. And this is a big problem. At least, in my opinion, we saw those competitive rules from the Hague Convention and the old regulation differ very much. So we can have a situation, we will potentially have a situation in which the court of the Hague Convention say and the court of Rome to regulation will use different conflict of law rules leading to different um, substantive law uh, rules. And this is something that is against the principles underlying, underpinning the Rome to regulation. Uh, where it uh, has uh, talked about certainty of law, predictability of law, uh, and it, uh, and it, didn't, it didn't have in mind the possibility for a shopping. It's something that will be uh, or facing action there, the possibility for a shopping, which is very false by the fact that wrong to regulation does not allow to uh, the mechanism called the uh, and also by the fact that um, Brussels one VCAS regulation provides several options in terms of uh, jurisdiction of illegal in case of courts. So this uh, problem shopping is um, the problem in the yeah. yeah. Do you have any idea of why the legislature decided to give I think that it was because of the member states' um, position during the adoption of the wrong to regulation. So they didn't want to resign to the conventions that they were parties to. So it was a matter of policy, I guess. Um, something which, uh, uh, in the process of adopting, is the result of a compromise on the European level. That is the only thing that comes to me. Sorry, people saying that there's a different system now. Some member states do apply the 1973 Hague Convention. And those who are not parties, like Poland, our courts would apply them to regulation. Mm -hmm. So if we intended to have uniform conflict of law rules, but in that respect, we don't have them. Actually, the, the problem is similar with uh, in the area of uh, accidents by uh, vehicles, where as well 1971 type convention and the wrong to regulation. And for instance, Poland is a party to 1971. Hey, convention on accidents to, uh, to vehicles, cars, mm -hmm. and our courts, in case of those claims, do not use wrong to regulation, but they are obliged to pay uh, convention. So, wrong to provide uniformity, but to some extent. And uh, when we go to the conclusions, I think the best way would be to amend Article 28. To provide greater self certainty and predictability. But before we go there, let's have a look at the 1972 Hague Convention uh, rules, which were a number of for me because Poland is not a party of that convention. Uh, I have to say that they're very good. In the sense that this convention doesn't use uh, one uh, connecting factor, but it does use a group of connecting factors which ought to be applied jointly. So as you see, for example, uh, the connecting factor of law of habitual residence of a person directly suffering damage 
will be applicable but only on which you can assume that A or B is satisfied. The same goes with like injury. The law of the injury will be applied by the court in uh, 1973 Hague Convention states, but only if simultaneously the place of injury is either A, B, or C. So it is quite uh, complicated. Then if nothing like this happens, any of these conditions is not fulfilled, there is a somewhat special medical clause and there is a defense clause. And this defense clause is important because it, uh, it is also uh, a similar solution is also included in the regulation. The defense clause is to protect the producer, the manufacturer, uh, because the producer might protect himself from the applicability of any national law. It proves that he could not have reasonably foreseen that the product uh, of his his products or the same type of products would be made available in this state, which law we <coughs> are to be applied through commercial channels. So uh, maybe let me um, uh, sum up the 1973 convention. I think that this idea of having multiple and jointly applicable connecting factors was intended to bring predictability to protect the producer from applicability of accidental law, but the downside is protected. And then what would happen uh, instead in the courts of those member states who are not parties to 1970 They would have grown to the regulations, so they have been And with that, obviously, there is this choice of law possible, which we discussed. I'm happy to go back uh, to that. And uh, it was potentially providing some greater predictability. But if there is no choice of law between the parties, the court would be part of the which is. Uh, uh, the concept of law norm is designed precisely to deal with the public liability claims, and this article 5, I'm not going to lie, it's also a little bit complex because it includes four connecting factors, and they are to be applied gradually, and we call it a cascade of connecting factors. Right? And last but not least, there's the effect law. So that's how it looks like. Uh, so these are with the dots. You can see those uh, connecting uh, factors. Three of them are additionally equipped with the question <coughs> of a product being marketed in that country. So it's the law, the country in which the person uh, sustaining damage has habitual resident. If the product was marketed in that country, if not, then we go down, then we go down. Plus the defense clause of non foreseeability of marketing is given to the producers, the same as under the Hague Convention. And last but not least, there is this escape rule similar to Article 5 of manifesting closer connection with another country. So let me deal with that uh, step by step. And we should start by saying that uh, the impression is, and that was the put uh, behind the idea behind this rule. Uh, at least it seems so from the rest of the country of uh, the wrong regulation, that this norm, unlike the product liability directive, which is an instrument to protect inter part, this uh, rule, conflict of law rules, uh, is uh, has another philosophy. Uh, it is uh, rather, at least the beginning of the test, though, a balanced approach towards all interests at stake. So the European Union basically said we need some protection for the producers because we want them to feel safe and secure and so it will not to hinder the development of innovation. So uh, we are talking about the company's vessels, which is probably important to provide a legal flexible framework for the software programmers. And this is intended by uh, Article 5. So at least behind uh, the um, interactive minds when they propose article five. So, to be honest, initial drafts of the Rome 2 regulation uh, looked totally different. And this article five was much, much easier at the, on the level of the first initial proposal. It was the unconnected factor of the place of actual residence of the crime sustained damage, coupled with. Uh, the defense of non-foreseeability. So, 
would be much different, but then in the European Parliament, the discussion started and they amended subsequent to this official table line. Uh, maybe I'm going to say something about the, uh, this condition of market that in that country. So uh, we said uh, we've seen in Brexit for 20 that the European Union wants to protect the producers, and I think this is that element that uh, provides for that protection because uh, uh, all those laws will be applicable only if the product of the market that in that country. So it is aimed to uh, uh, for the producer to think where he wants to market the product so that he can uh, think about the risk involved and the fact that this law then would be applicable. So this is uh, uh, this uh, protective instrument for the producer. But in fact, um, what does it mean market words in that country? You can have the interpretation of that word. It may be only the place the stay where the product itself was put into circulation, or it may have a more flexible meaning of a state in which the product was um, promoted uh, offered. Right? Uh, to my knowledge, uh, I may be wrong, but to my knowledge, there is no ITJ uh, paper dealing with the oil marketing condition. Uh, so this is something still uh, to be determined. Um, definitely, uh, the narrow corners are marketed in that country may be enlarged a little bit by the fact that it doesn't have to be exactly this product that uh, creates the damage that it has to be marketed in that country, but the product of set price, and also it doesn't have to be marketed by the producer itself, the, the software uh, designer, the software producer for the uh, ships. Uh, we still don't know how the smartest for software programming for autonomous ships will develop. On one side, I'm thinking the end users are quite limited. <laughs> so, the uh, market in that country may be protected for the users. But on the other hand, I'm sure it's a bit national, right? So, it's opening for different laws to be applied. And then uh, the defense fraud, this is obviously a mechanism to protect uh, uh, producers from accidental models that they could not foresee to be applied. Uh, and I think that in case of autonomous ships, uh, it may uh, be important in two situations. First one is the pre existing financial relationship. So, in a sort of play between uh, uh, contractual parties. Uh, that uh, escape. Um, sorry, I thought I, I thought I was talking about the escape, but I'm talking about the defense as well. Um, one more time, uh, the defense as well, even to protect uh, the producers. What I wanted to say here that I read uh, an article, which one of the authors explains. Uh, that since we have this global market economy, the producers should take into account that their products will be sold everywhere, globally. But I don't think that this is uh, correct, because then it would make this difference for meaningless under the economic regulation. So uh, this is something to think about. And now the effect of manifesting closer connection and in case of autonomous vessels. Uh, it may be used, I think, in two situations. First one is this contractual relationship uh, between parties suffering damage and uh, a party claims to be liable. And the other one is the example of a bystander. I think that in case of an argument of autonomous vessels hit the pier, for example, the bystander is damaged, then the court might resort to the escape uh, rule. Saying that manifestly closely connected to law is the law, not the law of the producer, but the law of, but the, law of the, the uh, place of the final event. And now I'm going to rush to my conclusion. So, uh, in my opinion, Article 4 and 14 provides a uh, full field those um, ends of the wrong regulation, providing for certainty and predictability, the area of uncertainty for me is uh, product liability claims, uh, mainly because of the say company impressions. Uh, I believe that among those two, Article 5 of the wrong two regulations is better equipped, better prepared, to solve the conflict of rules pertaining to automated ships. 
Uh, we still are unsure how the marketing uh, condition will be interpreted in case of and in general, this is to be seen. And past to take uh, would be my uh, suggestion. The first solution is greater harmonization of the table data. I think that if we uh, unify the substantive law, then we can put the law rules uh, to that slate that we go to the draw. And this is being done, but it never will be done on such a level to clear all the uncertainty. So I, bet, I think the better solution would be to amend Article 28 to provide for the precedent for the superiority so to speak of the wrong regulation in the tax dimension. And with that, mm -hmm. then thank you. And I have to run for the IMOD. I'm sorry, I promise I'm going to be clear. But I'm going to start.